Hey guys, the next big reserve list card to fall is City of Traders, which is now a $200 card. Around February, so not too recent, but 60, 90, 180 days ago, you could definitely get a copy of City of Traders for under $60 TCG mids. And if you found a really good deal on eBay, probably could get it for $50, maybe even $45. Now they are at $200 a piece so the card price in a very short period of time has increased almost by quadruple until its current price point of $194.95 made $193.90 luckily you save like a dollar actually a dollar and five cents incredible what's happening right now and it's not going to stop ever because as long as the reserve list exist as long as the wizard of coast allows that to be abusable there's no way you can stop these people and these people will continue to buy as many of these reserve list cards as possible because the there's no repercussions of a buyout none to these at, at worst it goes back to the neutral price at best you make a couple hundred dollars if you put in a lot of money into it so far, to my knowledge, a very large investor has not gotten into it. Uh, when I mean a large investor, I mean someone like Ty Lopez, who has a million dollars to put in. Right now, you might think 20000 is a lot. In the scheme of things, it actually isn't very much, and it won't have as big of an impact as you know, a Ty Lopez, for instance. If Ty Lopez, for whatever reason, wanted to get into Magic Cards, and put a million dollars into underground C, that underground C could probably cost 500 bucks. And we're attracting Magic the Game is attracting, incentivizing, and encouraging these people to put money in it. So we haven't seen a big fish yet. We have not seen a we have not seen a mutual fund group. And I think that's what's coming next. I, I believe that's what's coming next is a bunch of people reading Forbes magazines will come to the conclusion that, yes, we're going to buy all of the dual lands and we're going to invest in it. It's sad, but it is the final evolution of MTG Finance. And people ask, you know, why, why do I dislike MTG Finance when I do it myself? It's because... When you take it to the extreme like this, no one benefits. It's fun to do, and I enjoy it. But at the end of the day, if they reprint Falia, great. I can collect more of her, and that's been my philosophy all along. And it's awesome to see a card that was not $2 become $8 today. But when the supply is so low and you abuse the system, that's something different. That's MTG Finance at its very, very end of the spectrum. But at the same time, that's the eventual conclusion of what MTG Finance stands for and what it is. Um, it is a way to make money from a collectible card game. That's the end goal. So leave me a comment. What do you guys think? <laughs> I, you know, the dual lands are eventually going to be purchased by someone. Uh, probably a mutual fund group, I assume. But anyway, it's, it's getting really ugly out there, guys. Really, really ugly.